The video I'm going to be doing this afternoon is just a little bit different, something I wanted to share with you for some time, but just haven't had the time really to put this together. Um, I'm, tonight I'm kind of a little dressed odd, uh, it's kind of the evening, I'm, I'm wearing a tzitzit or a uh, uh, talit katan is one way, but the tzitzit is the fringes on the four corners, you'll see it with most Orthodox Jews. Uh, are observant Jews that wear it. I uh, don't know if you I don't think I can actually get you to see the whole thing here without taking it off, but a lot of times uh, it is worn underneath the clothes if uh, it's an observant Jew, especially if he's a businessman, he'll wear it underneath his uh, clothing and you don't actually see the, the four fringes. But the reason I wanted to bring this up to you is because of the um, what was written in the Torah. Uh, Moses wrote about this and it's actually in two places. I'm going to read to you in Numbers chapter uh, 15, verse 38. He says, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them that they shall make themselves tzitzits on the corners of their garments uh, throughout their generations, and they shall place upon the tzitzit uh, of each corner a thread of turquoise wool. It shall co uh, constitute tzitzits for you, and you may see it and remember all the commandments of Hashem and perform them and not to explore after your heart and after your eyes after which you stray. The reason why I wanted to bring this up to you though is because what's kind of ironic to me is that, uh, that God actually has, us, has Moses commanded that it's put on the four corners of our garment. And it, I cannot help but think that even though we know that uh, that God has told Moses that this, this was is to is to be a reminder to us to to obey His law and to obey His word, um, He also does this after the Exodus. This is done after the Exodus, and of course we know from the prophets, the writings, uh, even in Moses, that Israel would be again would be scattered again as a people, and ironically to the four corners of the earth. And in doing so, we know that God says that he would gather us again from the four corners of the earth. And, it, and, I, and it's just really interesting to me to, to, to think of this because I, I have often wondered, because the Jewish people, everywhere you go, if you ever wear a tzitzit, you're, you know, they hit your fingers. You always feel it. You're always thinking of, of, of Hashem. You're, you're, you're think, it makes you think of prayer. It keeps your mind focused on God at all times. And this brings me to an interesting point that I would like to point out to my Jewish brothers as well, is when we think about uh, Jesus, when he was here on earth and he commands his apostles, they actually ask him, how should we pray? And of course, remember, the tzitzit is, is kind of, you know, it's not just a reminder of the law, but it, it, we tend to... Uh, makes us think to pray uh, without ceasing, you might say. But they asked Jesus, how should we pray? And I brought this out in another video, but for those that maybe have not ever seen this, it's an interesting point because he says to his apostles, pray like this, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Now it goes on further into the, into the prayer. It's a famed prayer by uh, the Christian believers. But I find that beginning of that prayer very ironic because he says our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name the word hallowed means to sanctify now you could translate it to hold it in high regard but i really believe that jesus was speaking up to sanctify the name of hashem now a lot of people would might differ with that and say well, you know god's name doesn't need sanctifying but according to the prophet ezekiel it does and there's a specific way in which God will sanctify his name. So there again, keep in mind, I'm looking at the tzitzit and I'm thinking about the four corners and that God has brought our people back from the four corners of the earth. And so we find that the prayer that Jesus tells his apostle is to pray for the sanctification of the name of Hashem. All right, now that doesn't mean to take and try to figure out how do you say Hashem in English, the yod heh vav -Hey, the Tetragrammaton, which is the Hebrew letters, yod heh vav -Hey, which spells uh, the, 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 uh, the uh, there's organization that says Jehovah, which is kind of funny because that's not how you say his name. We threw the vowels in from the word Adonai, so they're not saying it right in the first place. So if they think they've uh, brought the name back, no, they didn't. Uh, but anyway, 
I uh, don't want to get into that. But let's go right here to Ezekiel in uh, chapter 36. I'm going to drop down to verse 16 and read for you here. And uh, it says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own ways and deeds. To me their way was like the uncleanliness of a woman in her customary um, impurity. Therefore, I poured out my fury on them for the blood they had shed and on the land for their idols, which, which, they, held, which they had excuse me, defiled it. So I scattered them among the nations and they were dispersed throughout the countries. I judged them according to their ways and their deeds. Uh, when they came to the nations, wherefore they went, they profaned my holy name. All right, now the name of God, Hashem, the Lord, is being profaned when they're coming to these other countries. Now let's see how his name gets profaned. When they said of them, these are the people of the Lord, that's Hashem, and yet they have gone out of his land, but I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations, whether they went, in other words, wherever they went to. And I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, uh, which you have profaned in their midst, and the nations shall know that I am Yahweh, uh, Yahweh, or, um, you know, different ways. You have to understand, for Jewish people, we don't like to say the name improperly. And if we don't know how to say it properly, then for us, it's taking the Lord's name in vain. So we say Hashem. That's for the Christian people. I, I did say that for your sake, um, and God knows my heart in this. Uh, but anyways, it's profaned. In the midst of uh, the nation shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when I am hallowed in you before their eyes. Now, God's going to be hallowed. His name is going to be sanctified when? Let's find out when. Verse 24, For I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of the countries, and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean, and I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you, and I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them. That verse right there, the, the last one, there's your tzitzit. There's your prayers to keep the commandments of Hashem. We have been praying, my brethren, ever since Moses, after the Exodus, commanded us that God said, put the fringes on. We were praying to keep the commandments of Almighty God before the fall, or before we were ever scattered as a people. He had us praying already to keep the commandments. And, and so we have the fringes on the four corners showing that he would bring us back from the four corners of the earth. Now I'm going to read to you in just a moment here in Isaiah, uh, so you can kind of follow that up. But ironically, this man Jesus comes along, and I believe him to be Mashiach, Ben David. You can argue that all you want, but I can prove it. You want to debate it any time, any place. I'm gladly sit down with you as a brother and, and show this to you, my brothers. But, uh, you know, the thing is, is Jesus even says to his apostles, pray like this, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now, why does, why does Jesus tell his apostles to pray that God's name would be hallowed or be sanctified? He knew that the rest of Israel is going to be scattered. So, I mean, this is just absolutely fascinating. And let's real quick, let's take a look at the book, uh, book of Yeshayahu, Isaiah. And uh, it's either chapter 12, verse 11, or it's chapter 11, verse 12. I just kind of did this off the cuff, so please forgive me and bear with me on this. And we're about done here. I just want to bring this out to you. Let's go to 12, excuse me, 11, verse 12. He will set up a banner for the nations and will assemble the outcast of Israel and gather together to the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Now, for, for you that believe in replacement theology, I don't know if you know this or not, but in 723 BCE, the house of Israel was scattered. Judah was scattered in 70 AD. And God promised to his prophet Isaiah that he would return us. Now, we're there in the nation now. Now, you may have in your replacement theology crazy ideas 
that, you know, that hey, because we haven't recognized, not all the Jews have recognized that Jesus is Messiah at this point, that something must be wrong. But the point is, is quit judging what's going on right now. He said in one day that we'll be born a nation. He wasn't talking about 1948. But it's when we receive Moshiach bin David and believe it, that is when it'll take place. One day in the spirit of Moshiach bin David, the, the spirit of Hashem will come upon us as a people. Baruch haba, God bless you, my brethren. If you don't recognize who Moshiach is as of yet, you need to get to Goshen and find out who he is. God bless you.